and we are live everyone and simon's disappeared because he's um attacking the dog i have to constantly be like sourcing a dog and being like oh are you pooing in my shoe oh no you're just <laughs> weeing in it it's okay. <laughs> either way you know it's, yeah. it is great i have to um, just forfeit the trainers oh yeah we're just are you continuing to get new trainers all the time? Anyway, hello. No, hello. 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 Hi. hello. Hi, guys. We just carried on the conversation we were having before we went live. Um, yeah. Hello to you, Jack. Hello to you, Simon. How are you? Bonjour. Gents, you Good. all right? Um, Jack, uh, hello, everyone watching, or the, maybe there's just the one person who is watching. Um, welcome to Jack from Fitness Lab. Getting there. You're getting, getting, there, I'm getting there. Getting it. I'm getting it. Yeah. Simon, Metabolic Movement, and I'm your host, George Yule. Um, from George Hill Coaching. So, from George, yeah. Kebab <laughs> most, House Coaching. Yeah. <laughs> so, Simon, tell us about the dog, man. Wow, well, well, we bought a dog. We, like, it's actually my birthday present for my 30th. And um, we bought a Cocker Spaniel. And we thought, we, we were told nine weeks, nine and a half weeks old, um, fully vaccinated, wormed everything, come back. Um, day one, worms. So we're like, ah, oh, that's so strange. Yeah, day one worms, so we got our worms, and then, um, then, then we just thought like she's just small. Everybody's just saying like she's really small. So we checked her weight against her age, and at her age, she should be over five kilos. She's one and a half kilos. No, oh, so she's tiny. So she's about five she's... and a half weeks, maybe. she will probably be about six weeks old now. Um, so really, she was nine weeks, but she's actually way younger. That, that's it. Yeah, said everything, man. Um, Casey registered the whole yoke. Um, but I, um, kind of naive and the her, but I wouldn't have changed it. Like she has gained a pound in a week, though. Yeah, as I'm going. So, but now she's just trying to terrorise my entire house. So it's grand. Yeah, yeah, I bet it's lovely. I yeah. bet it's just, at least you're oh, there. No, it's class. It's class. Yeah, it's class. <laughs> <That's lovely. laughs> Jack, how's your beat week been? My week's been good so far. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's all good. Yeah. Got my bike. Oh, yeah. I sort it. You got a bike? Yeah, I've got one. Yeah, yeah, got a new one. New one. Good. Well, you bought a new one or? Yeah, I had to get a new one. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, anyway, they all wanted. Um, <laughs> new one, like proper, like fancy road bike with the uh, like curved handles. Ah, oh, no, nah, no way. Wait, like before going places, like obviously other bikes were competition. Now, yeah. it's like, they're, they're too slow. So now it's cars. Now it's like a traffic lights. Like I'm yeah. beating you. As far, I go as fast as I can and fly. It's Tell so me this, though. Did, have you, did you notice dramatically the difference in speed from the bike you had before to an actual road bike? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really? So, yeah, I've gone through three stages of bikes. So the very first one, I was stupid and went to a second-hand store and just took a really cheap 50-quid bike. It was like a girl's bike, <laughs> gauge bike. And, like, I'll, I'll send you an image. It's like the seat's, like, this high. Cause it's like at the very end of how high you can have the pole yeah <laughs> and then a normal hybrid bike and then now this yeah the difference is crazy yeah so the hybrid's like a mountain bike frame with um road bike tires is it like, well actually, yeah just like normal frame i had no suspension or anything just yeah like normal standard bike but yeah then, like the upgrade you just fly along like no effort you just go yeah class man because i always hear people get them and i'm like sometimes i'm like are you just getting that because you think you're cool um, yeah. Or is it you no? Know, and you know, it's like you know, um, when people have all the gear and no idea. Oh, there's loads of them, like all the lycra and stuff, and then it's the best. Yeah. Did you get? Did you get the lycra? Yeah. <sighs> Next week. <laughs> Maybe. Next week. Yeah. 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 Full onesie. Even like replacing golf or something, and not wanting to do golf. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I just <laughs> golf. Um, okay, we should probably start this thing, shouldn't we? Yeah. Um, so, um, what, what what the plan is today is to, uh, basically a continuation of last week's podcast, um, which was covering uh, how to progress someone from um, base one, never been in the gym, all the way through to uh, doing a back squat or a deadlift and a deadlift. Um, so, we're going to do it for uh, chin ups and bench press today probably start with bench press i think because that's um, a bit more of a broad subject i th i think anyway um but um just, do we want to recap on last week do you think here guys do we'll do a bit of recap on on last week yeah. maybe a, a quick recap on the deadlift shall we so what is so simon you covered the deadlift yesterday so what are you yesterday last week so why don't we do a just a supersonic quick recap on on progression from a to z a, a to z on deadlifts on deadlifts go 
um, mm. how long? Like it's under pressure now because what happens if I don't get the progression right? So I go from the progression on my list is 45 degree back extension with a stick to teach um, where neutral spine is and how to drive with the hips rather than just pull them in the back. Then I progress that up on the horizontal back extension. From the horizontal back extension, then I'll go to an RDL because it's a very similar move and uh, driving type. Then from the RDL, and that'll be dumbbell, then on the barbell, um, and then from the barbell then, I'll probably go on the uh, kettlebell deadlift. Kettlebell deadlift moves on the uh, hex bar deadlift. Hex bar deadlift then eventually on the Olympic bar deadlift. But uh, I've, it, now after conversations, I would add into the elevated kettlebell deadlift after Jack and you were talking about it because that's something I didn't think about because it's easier to be up yeah. a little bit taller and keep the position. Because again, most of the people that are doing deadlifts are not competing, so it's not paramount that they're on the floor. Cool. Um, and um, three assisting exercises that you think would really be beneficial for anyone who wants to keep their deadlift nice and strong. The deadlift for me would be uh, would be an RDL and some version of a back extension, um, just because you're you're reinforcing neutral spine, you're reinforcing drive from the hips, um, and they're just a lot less taxing on the body if I'm coming down from there. Like my favorite would always be a barbell RDL. Yeah. Yeah. And Jack, same thing, squats. So squats, so for me, the way I do it, I go counterbalance squat or counterweight squat. Um, just learn the patterning and then take that inner step into a goblet squat. And then from a goblet squat, you could either go, depending on your ability, either full into a front squat or into a safety bar squat, depends. And then from there, you could then transfer that into a back squat. Cool. And uh, remember, just a, a note that I think we all, the three of us want to hammer in. Um, this shouldn't be a quick progression. It's not like it's three weeks and that one, three weeks and that one, three weeks and that one. You know, it's four weeks, weeks, isn't it? Normally? It's more like four weeks. Than yeah. It, than, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But you're looking more maybe um, nine months. weeks, months. Yeah. yeah. You could yeah. be months on an exercise. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, we're, we're trying to hammer in that be patient with your progress type of uh, message with, uh, with all of this. Uh, we, um, did get a, we did get a question from um, Mike. I forgot this, actually. Remember Mike the Knight from, uh, from Breakthrough? Canada Mike? Oh, Mike, yeah. yeah. Mike did, you ever meet, did you ever meet Mike? No, he, he would have left, wouldn't he? Jack? Mike. Is uh, it the guy, Mike? Yeah, Mike Mills. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Canada yeah. Mike, yeah, as he called yeah, it. Yeah. Uh, he, he just wanted to, um, well, he was, he was talking about, well, we talked a lot about ankle mobility, didn't we, with regards to the squat. Um, yeah. And he was saying that he's been finding um, a lot of people with, um, with rec fem short, that a similar thing happens um, as in the bump. That bum pushes back and then tucks under at the mm. if you go too low. Uh, do you find that is a is an effect, or do you so, find that so like anteriorly hip the hips tight? Yeah, yeah. That yeah. Pulls, yeah, it can pull them down. Yeah, that can be an element of it. Yeah, yeah. It's not do always, you, not always. But I, I remember because it's such a weird concept to understand. Is it not that a hip flexor can tuck your bum under because uh, after it's, after it's, ninety. Like, yeah, because the hip flexor should essentially give you more arch if it's overworking, isn't it? But I think I was watching a video and it's something that way it's working, it has no, it leaves no room for maneuver, so it does it go in the flexion your back. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, basically, yeah, you just, your hip doesn't have, like you say, your hip doesn't have enough space, so it just gets yeah. to the point where the only place it can go is tuck under to get the range you want. Yeah. Um, so just, I would just look at general overall hip mobility, not just anteriorly. Yeah. Look at also, also on top of that is just it's like if you don't have enough hip flexor strength it's really hard to keep neutral spine at the bottom because your hip flexors are still working they pull pull the pelvis forward as the lower back pulls the bum up they keep that neutral position in the bottom of the squats and not all bad having strong hip flexors do you um do you think however if if the ankle mobility is is um increased even if you have that tightness is around the hips and 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 rec fem quads um do you think that the ankle mobility being um improved will make that less apparent or does that very much depend on how tight the, the quad and hip flexors are i guess so do you mean so when you do the squat so like i said to you as i as my ankle mobility is improved i'm able to keep a much more upright position meaning that it, it isn't as hard to keep a neutral spine anymore 
while I'm squatting. It's getting easier each yeah. week. So does that somehow, as, as, you, as you do the squat and as your knees travel forward because your ankle mobility is allowing it, does that lessen the effect of having a tight quad at, through a squat? Does it make like it hip flexor, Tight hip flexors, sorry, yeah. It's maybe, hard to know, I guess. Yeah, maybe. But, um, I think the, the tightness in the hip, yeah, it can pull you slightly forwards, but I don't think it, for me, it's not the main thing that does it. It's predominantly ankles. Yeah. Um, the thing with the, like, the hip, maybe because, because you're able to get deeper into your squat, obviously the angle in your hip is going to increase decrease so like the you might get a pinching point just because you're able to get deeper so that position between your hip and your thigh is going to get less so you're able to that's going to decrease so that's where you may have an issue where if for example it's tight or it's probably weak if anything that's where you can feel the issue and it's like oh i can feel that deep inside the hip when you get to that bottom position because you've improved your ankle mobility. So it's like a knock-on yeah. effect. Yeah, yeah like created a new problem, essentially, from having an extra... Yeah, it just, just re- you have the realisation that, oh, my hips are probably really weak or tight, or whatever, however you want to describe yeah, it. Because you, f- you found um, a new range, basically, yeah. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Like, mm, All right, I thought you just said that you found a new range yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Me? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what, as in, like, a voice range? I don't know. Just in can general, you, can you see my? Can you yeah, see what my, are you? The world? I'm. I'm. I'm the world. I couldn't think of anything this week, so I just used the generic background that came on. Yeah. Because Jack Jack pointed out some things in my room, <laughs> rather people that. not see. It's nothing weird, but like Jack made it weird, so now I can't stop thinking about it. Yeah. And by the way, <laughs> Uni- by the way, Union Berlin are so rubbish. <laughs> that that so do, you think, do you think that they only become rubbish since you put your background up? Yeah, I think, I think maybe that might be the case. They lost yeah. 2 0 to Bayern Munich, which you think, all right, it's Bayern Munich. And then they lost 4 0 to their bitter rivals, Heart of Berlin. And I just think, like, <laughs> well, it's, this, it's your rivals. You don't lose 4 0 to them. You know, you lose 1 0 in a grueling encounter. You, you know, so, you know, my football experience has been, I need to stop supporting them. And I just spot, if I start supporting Bayern Munich, then. I'll watch a team that wins each week. So I might just do that. So um, um, anyway. Um, so, <laughs> so, what people come in to listen to. It's what the people come in to listen to. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> oh, God. Uh, hold on. We've got a question from, from someone. Um, uh, if you've become the best you can be at a deadlift, i.e. you've maxed out on the weight you can lift, is there something to follow on with either to progress or a different lift, what would you do next? If you, Let's say you got to a, uh, a, a position, the person's asking, it's Helen actually, is asking, if you got to a position on the deadlift where you've kind of maxed out, you've, you've progressed and progressed and progressed, what can you do from there? How can you, I think it's about t- talking about how we can be at a point where, you know, you've really stuck at a weight, for example, if you're working maximally. What are the protocols we can, we can do next? I mean, so if I'm listening to that question, right, is if the person has reached their genetic potential of how much weight they can lift. Yeah, or, or I mean? uh, yeah, I think so. I think so. I think that's what. Just a stand, like, if it's just a standard deadlift, then like off the floor or, if, yeah, if that's appropriate. Yeah. I mean, you could yeah, go so. into, just if you were just doing normal standard, we're just plates on the end of a bar, I guess you could go, you'd just increase the difficulty of the, movement so you could go into something like a deficit deadlift if yep. you like, if you're really that good that you've reached like the limit of what you can do on a normal deadlift yeah deficit deadlift you could add add different type of resistance profiles so chains bands bands um mix it up like that snatch so grip deadlift yeah, yeah change yeah, exactly yeah they're key yeah yeah so it's, it's, i don't think it's um yeah i suppose genetic um ceiling is 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 kind of the question but it's also like if i suppose it it's the same if you hit a sticking point for a certain period of time isn't it if you yeah. you know because yeah. um yeah, yeah you can change, do them yeah, thing. Not just change it up if you've just been doing your traditional lift it for a couple reps or what have you been doing yeah change the resistance profile change how you do your set so you could do something like a cluster set mm, uh, yeah. mix it up like that rest pause or, yeah, absolutely rest pause sets you've got um 
do you, do you want to just you've explain got all sort of like yeah but you've also got so many different loading patterns that you can do fluid wave loading patterns and all that sort of stuff which end up like stimulating the nervous system so you come back a little bit stronger there's so many different protocols though mm. should we should we just discuss a couple of them just quickly just to give the give the people an idea so why don't we discuss um rest pause if someone wants simon and if you want to cover that one rest pause how would you yeah it's where you rest you but you pause at the same time <laughs> i always generally find it, yeah. um, now rest pause systems are actually quite good where you bring yourself to the brink of fatigue and then you take time away and then you will give yourself like a minimal amount of time to recover and then try and get another rep so be instead of just completely flooring yourself under the ground um and then possibly only getting five reps you might be able to do a rest pause system and get eight reps out of it so therefore now you know if you're doing 100 kilo for five fives and you've you've plateaued in that but then now you've started doing rest pause on the last set and you add three more reps to that it's you know you're going to stimulate um adaption to the body it's going to force it into a point where it's got to try and adapt to what you're doing so you're just essentially trying to break plateau um, they use it quite a lot, we athletes as well. Um, it's a really easy way. But the, I think the key, I don't know, Jack, you might be able to say on this, but the key with that is, is they not go to absolute failure. You're almost leaving, you're leaving something in the tank where you're thinking, I could get an all rep, but it's going to be a sloppy rep. And then you yeah. bring it back. Yeah. Um, yeah, like if you look at powerlifters, for example, who like compete and they're literally, their exercises are deadlift, squat, bench. If you look at like the people who world, like, have world records, maybe like sort of like the West Side guys, the times, the number of times they fail a lift, you like is zero. Yeah. In the gym, like they, they, they don't fail lifts. They don't go and attempt. It's not like they go into. It's the not gym. like bodybuilding, is it at all? No, it's completely different. Like the num- yeah, like I said, the number of times they fail a lift will be zero. So mm. you don't need to go to failure. Um, and then just to add on something that you can do with the deadlift question where it's like you've met, like you if you're a plateau you can't feel like you're going any further a lot of people will be oh i need to deadlift more where you could take the view that you don't deadlift you take time away from it and you work on different exercises that will then complement your deadlift so you could literally not touch the barbell for six weeks do things like glute ham raises or something that yeah along the lines will assist your deadlift come back to it and often find that you're better at the exercise yeah that was actually the second half of the question jack so you covered that as well so that's 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 good well done well done so yeah so those are uh, yeah it's really good um just briefly do you want to just um jack do you want to go through wave loading um how you program that just just very quick yeah so you could go during your week if you look at it like a micro cycle you could have a session where you have max strength so it's heavy super heavy reps are really low so you have your max strength day and then you could have uh, a lighter day middle of the week where you can deload everything deload the volume and you can do that in a, in, other, in different ways so you could focus more on the power um where you're focusing on the speed of the bar you could just have it as a deload day just to reduce the weight but just focus on the movement um so essentially if you think about the graph being here so intensity being really high on the first day but the volume low and then you could go down so the on the wednesday for example you could have it where volume may be the same but the intensity is much lower and then you could either increase it again or you could have it go down again it's up to you so basically you're not just going the same heavy weight the whole time no, kind of time. just yeah just as yeah, that, yeah. do that in a number of ways you can do it through like the intensity the weight or something i like to do is you can reduce the intensity by adding in like a whole session that's focused on unilateral work so for example if you do three full body sessions a week or upper low or whatever you could do your bilateral day where the intensity in general will probably be higher because you're able to lift more load through two limbs than one so be up here and then you could go down in intensity with a unilateral day because obviously through one leg or one arm the weight isn't going to be as heavy as if it was through two arms or two legs so you get that decrease in intensity to have that dip so you're not smashing yourself all the time but then you still have a good session you feel like yeah i've done hard work cool yeah i think that's a 
Good answer, gents. Um, let's move on to the bench press, shall we? Um, unless you boys have got anything else to to talk about with regards to deadlift and squat. I think we covered quite a lot there. At some point, we will come back, um, I think, and talk about um, in more detail how to then make progressions on your squat when you know you're at the the point where you're progressing much much slower. Um, but let, that's let's save that for another day and, and move on to the bench press. Um, uh, let's just discuss bread press today because I think that's all we'll probably have time for. So, um, or chin ups. What would you prefer? What do you or think? Bench, or bench press? What do you think? Bench or press. Bench. Let's go bench press today. Let's go <laughs> bench press. So, um, someone walks into a gym, they've never trained before, but they'd like to. They'd like to get to a barbell press, and they'd like to. They'd like to press well. Where do you start them? Okay, I'm going to go with you, Simon. Well, um, we'll all cover this, including myself. Yeah. So generally, what I would do is just um, get them set up on a bar with chains, and I'll just start doing <laughs> max, <laughs> <laughs> and just and just go for it. You know, just do as many reps as much one weight arm. as possible. Yeah, oh, man, yeah, absolutely. One arm, yeah. yeah. Um, Stu, so, like bench press, never done it before. Like absolutely on the floor in terms of like experience. Strip it right back, press ups. Go for something where they have to stabilize the body, they start getting the core involved, they learn how to stay tight because a lot of people don't think about tightness when they're doing something like a bench press because they think they're lying down. But all the best lifters in the world have full body tightness to get their lats and everything locked in. And the, the press up is such a valuable tool, I think, for that. And there's so many grips you can use, um, and it's a really easy way for them to create stability from there. Then my, my way of going is I always like to go for a dumbbell press and I always start with a neutral press. So I'm, I'll, I'll mimic a, a, a press up position, elbows in nice and tight. Um, and generally it, it will start flat. I'll work through that range. Then I'll work in the incline press. Um, and obviously there's assisted moves going on here at all points. Um, they stabilize the shoulders, we upper back and so on. Um, but I'm queuing points at all point, all times here. So getting them to retract their shoulders, getting them to learn how to press the weight up by keeping themselves tight into the bench and keeping the shoulder. Because how many times do you see somebody push and that's happening the whole time? Their shoulders are coming up, their head's off the bench, their chin's up. Um, so I'm trying to cue those points. So, but from an exercise position, it's flat bench press, uh, dumbbells, incline dumbbell press, still on a neutral position. So hands face to chair, elbows tight. Then the next step is I'll start transitioning into a 45 degree, they a bit of an elbow wide position because it's such a different movement. And the difference between a dumbbell and a bar is that a bar is a fixed, it's a fixed thing, it's a fixed object. And it needs a lot of stability for something that has stability in itself. And dumbbells are just brilliant for that. So you're working a lot more on your rotator cuff with a dumbbell. You're stimulating more muscle in the pecs and in and around the shoulder with dumbbells. And once I've, I'm happy that I've gone through all the, the progressions for neutral, incline, flat, decline possibly, and bringing the elbows out, and they can actually hold the dumbbells without me having to watch them, then I'll move under the bar. And it doesn't stop there for me. I'll go neutral on the bar. Just outside, just outside shoulder width for the grip, keeping the elbows nice and tight again because a lot of people seem to have more problems. I don't know about you guys, have more problems with the shoulders on a bar than you do dumbbells mm. yeah, um, just because great. of that fixed position because a dumbbell you can move in and around. And it, like I said, because it's, it's loose, it's creating more stability. So you get a lot of smaller muscle grips working harder. And then if that's safe, then I'll work it out to a wider grip. And that's, a, that's usually my progression i do i never use dips for it because dips are just such a, a different move completely it's not a horizontal press it's you know i'd pair that with a chin up or something because it's more of a vertical load do you know yeah um that's, that's, jack that's thank you simon jack similar sort of thing yeah, so i would also start with push-ups but i start with like a barbell raise push-up especially if they're like they've literally done nothing just because of the progression and for the person to see the goal of where to get to works really well because you see the bar lower each week. Um, but yeah, I agree. Yeah, I think people jump to something like a dumbbell or a barbell bench way too quick. I think even from push-ups, 
once they're able to do full body weight push-ups like 10 15 then i would go into a weighted push-up so just a simple plate okay. on the back cool. um just get as much out of it as possible get that because yeah like simon said if you can jump too quickly something like a dumbbell bench and you see a lot of people with like five kilograms doing the bench and they haven't built the stability and knowledge in their body and they're doing this all the way down and wobbling on a dumbbell bench and then wobbling all the way up just because for me i always go push-ups first because yeah you just learn to stabilize the joint and the actual movement pattern so yeah raised barbell push-ups normal push-ups weighted push-ups then something like a dumbbell bench um and then yeah progress that um, you can then yet yeah, change the position of the bench to get more variation out of it. Um, and then into barbell bench. And then probably you could then you can argue either way, I guess. Um, but you could do something like a football bar bench as well. Just because Love that. like, yeah, because the position most of the time with the handle on football bench is nicer. Yeah. It translates more to dumbbells. It's nicer on the shoulder. Yeah. But if anyone's ever used a football bench, it's not the same as a barbell. Like you have that stability issue. Like you think, oh, I can bench whatever on a barbell. You grab it and then people are wobbling because the loading's different. Um, so the stability change is there. So yeah, probably do barbell bench and then probably progress to that because of that stability change. Um, but it's interesting you spoke about shoulder blade position. So I had a discussion with Ollie, one of our coaches the other day to get his thoughts. Because there's so much about it and where you position the shoulder blade for pushing and pulling. And for me, like for ages, I was like, oh, yeah, you have to keep your shoulder blades back and retracted. And I cued that for ages. But then like reading up and what obviously with pushing and stuff, your shoulder blades have to be able to move forward. Yeah. And retract back. That's the natural movement of them. They have retraction, yeah. retract, and then upwards rotation and downwards rotation. Speak about yeah. Um, but it'd be good, yeah, get your thoughts because I asked Ollie and we discussed it. And something like a dumbbell bench or a push up, I'm more than happy for their shoulder blades to come forward. Yeah, yeah, mo definitely Even more so there. than a barbell. Yeah, on a barbell, yeah, we discussed it. Normally, the barbell load is going to be heavier than what you have on a dumbbell. Yeah. So it just for stability and safety reason, we were like, yeah, probably for a barbell, we'd probably cue. Yeah. sticking it down and back because the stability around the joints can be greater yeah whereas the dumbbell you can get away with it and get that extra range and allow that movement of the shoulder blade yeah and sometimes you get that extra um that extra load on the pecs when you do bring the shoulder forward because yeah. you know that's what the pecs do essentially they put, pull the shoulder protract it forwards so yeah absolutely um it, most of the time when I'm cueing that is that they see if because sometimes it creates space when you pull down and back with the yeah. shoulder blade so I, I don't know if you have ever noticed it before but sometimes when if somebody has a, a, a pain in their shoulders let's say or they're just a bit uncomfortable you can cue the down and back with a, a bench press a dumbbell press and it just allows I feel like more stability but more space yeah. in their AC joint so they can just move the same weight to the same pattern but just with a, no pain yeah but yeah definitely i didn't think about that yeah no, I think there's, I th yeah I think there's very i think there's variation i think um um with with people who can move pretty well and are fairly strong and have had some level of experience in in presses i think you can definitely allow the shoulder to to move forward and back especially on a, a dumbbell um and especially if you're trying to build muscle around the chest like Sai said and i think it goes back with the reason I tend to get people to really fix down and hold even on a, on a dumbbell is because most of the people, well, a, a large proportion of the people that I see, the minute they let their shoulders um, move forward, then they've just got no control at that point. So maybe that's a, something that I should uh, you know, potentially start adding is start to cue that controlled movement of the shoulder forward mm, yeah. so that they're intentionally doing it rather than it's just happening because they've got no control of the, yeah. of the weight. Yeah, so it's, yeah. yeah, yeah. So it's like, yeah, yeah. That's yeah, so what I find it. just at the start, you find people just, you know, yeah. or, or they're doing that. You ever get that when they come down to the bottom of the bench press and they move the shoulder girdle forward? Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, that's, that's, that's a classic. That's a classic thing. So yeah, it's range on the position they're taking. And it's, this is, can be said for pretty much all exercises. Most people take 
the range of the they take to the maximum the range of the joint rather than the muscle so yeah. speaking specifically about a press like a dumbbell press from here going all the way back that for me but it depends on each person obviously but for me just beyond the midline of the body is range for my pec if i go beyond that's range shoulder. the shoulder so that's when people have that issue where when they do bench they do press and i just feel it in my shoulder it's probably because they're going way too mm. far and yeah. exactly right. As soon as you, if, ever, if you do this movement, put your finger on your shoulder joint, the further you go back, you feel your shoulder pull down and forward. Yeah, it rotates forward. It becomes forward so rotation, you, yeah. yeah. And like, obviously, we've all done it probably when we first started out. You want to go as far down as you feel like, yeah, yeah stretch the muscle as yeah. far as you can. You're not. All you're doing is stretching the joint rather than the muscle itself. And then you're just fucking up your shoulder joint by getting in all the ligaments and everything. And as far and as like Louis Simmons and all that, don't go. I know obviously there's wrecked in their shoulders and all, but like they, he doesn't even prescribe like a lot of bench to chest or bar to chest anymore. When we done the course in Dublin, do you remember George? The yeah, incline yeah. barbell press with John Meadows, he just doesn't go anywhere near his chest with a bar. He stays about two inches off. He's like, I just want to save my shoulders. Yeah. But yeah. there's that misconception in there that no, I have to go, I have to go all the way oh, down, squeeze yeah. as far as I can. But like you said, yeah, it's just that pivot you get. That yeah. little motion that you did there, I was training with, um, well, a couple of my mates came in, into the gym in Bath, Stands of Fitness, to to do a session with me, and um, they're strong lads. They've been training for years, but every one of them presses from this position, so they fix yeah. themselves in that position. And the first thing they said to me was like, I've never been able to develop my chest. Um, yeah. I've done loads of benches and I've never been able to develop my chest. Yeah, they've done. They're, they're overhead pressing like 35, 37.5 kilos for reps. Yeah. So, like, you know, they've put them, so all they've ever trained in bench press is shoulders. Do you know yeah. what I mean? That's, that's, yeah. all they've, that's all they've done. And I'll tell you something, when you, the minute you sink them down into a position where their chest would work better, all of a sudden they can't lift very much. And I mean, they've got the potential because they're, yeah. they're strong, but they just haven't worked it. So, yeah, I think that's. Yeah, but I like that whole gliding forward idea, um, idea with the with the press in there. Yeah. Um, and this, you can say the same for the movement coming forwards. Like if you really, you can argue it both ways, I guess. But if you're really sort of wanting to build and develop the muscle size in your chest, what you don't want to do is lock out because then the problem yeah. is tension. Like if you, you can feel it, if you're yeah. if you do this wherever you are, but the two people listening, if you push forward. <laughs> and sit and look if you lock it out you can feel your chest here is loose it's gone yeah then if you finish just short of it you can feel the tension still in your pet yeah. so if you really want to develop the chest size yeah don't lock out because you take away the tension from the muscle and it goes on to the joint which can then also impact the shoulder issues you may have i actually haven't locked out on a bench press in years i don't think <laughs> Yeah. Unless unless I'm doing very specific, like if I'm doing five fives and stuff, which I don't ever do, you're you know, under five fives is just I'm just calling it because it's just strength protocol. But you know, if I'm doing the ones and twos and all that, then I'll be focusing on press, lock, down, press. But like generally on that normal rep range of six to twelve or higher, I'm staying soft all the time. Yeah. Just there. Just keeping that range. Tension, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Um I I'll just add that with um when people come in to, and they want to improve, improve their bench, they haven't done any pressing ever. Um, I tend to not press with them for the first How dare three, you. Yeah, <laughs> three, maybe, maybe six weeks. Um, because most of the people we see haven't got the shoulder stability. And most of the people we see have probably been sat at a desk um, for the last t 10 or so years, maybe, maybe five or so years. So in my, my, Head, there's no, they're not in a position yet um, to to do any if uh, you know any if at all pressing. Um, then I then I move them on to you know similar to the protocols that you guys did, but I do loads of kind of lap work, uh, trap work, external rotation, loads and loads of that as part of their their program. Um, in the meantime, trying to tell them that this is leading somewhere. I promise that we are going to press. Yeah, but, but see, I need to, yeah, I need to make sure that this is all right first, um, before before we can do that. That used it doesn't take as long as I, it doesn't take as long as it used to take for me, and I think that's because I was making, I was making a nervous decision on when to do it, 
And actually, after about three weeks, they're much better. And then, then, then you can start as long as they're consistent, of course. Uh, but before I take like six, nine weeks, and by then, client's bored. Yeah. Wants to, you know, wants to do the pressing that they came in to do. So, um, but that was about learning progressions, really. And actually, the, 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 the issue that I was having early on um, was I was doing a few weeks of that, um, a few weeks of that stuff. And then I was going straight to, straight to a press. Um, and they just weren't ready. Um, yeah. So um, you had in things like in the beginning, something like a scat push up, or yeah. like yeah. something like is like a landmine press. Yeah. You can, you can have so you, safe. Yeah, so safe. Way yeah. nice for the shoulder for the majority of people, and then you can learn to have that protraction and retraction of the shoulder really easily because like you're mm. supposed to do that, and it gets serratus as well, which is massively important for the shoulder stability. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, that's so, that. that means listen to when you wing scapula if you turn turns on the side and you can see the scapula so uh, the serratus interior will pull bone back should the same i literally i literally didn't hear any of that because i lost Wait. you there so uh, <laughs> yeah. that was me. i thought that was me i was like oh <laughs> i was saying that, <laughs> i was saying that um, the serratus interior is responsible for trying to keep that shoulder blade flat to the body so often you'll see some kids with their it's called the wing scapula where they you could see the two bones of the scapula poking out and that that's important actually because not that many people do anything about it no you just leave it and then carry on but yeah yeah. But um, going back to what you're saying about the rotator cuff and all, do you remember Charles Pollock and used to have the theory that whatever your one rep max bench press is, you should be able to do nine percent of that on an external rotation for I do eight, remember yeah. eight reps. He would go on, and he always used to quote. Obviously, like I don't know how much of it's true and not true because you know he always says he worked with um, Olympic gold medalists, but he might have wrote a program for one. Um, <laughs> that doesn't mean he made them win the Olympics. Um, <laughs> But God bless him. Yeah, God, uh, yeah. But he, obviously, he said the one th the one um, example he uses. He had an N NHL hockey um, player because they so they get graded. Do you obviously have you have fighters in the league, don't you? So you have people who are punchers, and you know they have them in there for scraps and whatever, and they keep people at bay. And um, he had a guy in there, and he said he'd done for three months. He'd done zero bench press with him, and only worked as external rotator obviously a long way over shit, but he didn't do any bench press and he brought his external rotator strength up and his bench press went up by like 50 pounds in weight just from that. Yeah. And that was only from creating stability. Obviously there would have been a lot of tricep work in there. There probably would have been shoulder work and so on. So it wasn't just one magnificent thing, but that's the one thing that he was trying to, because he used to have a, a protocol where, you know, you would do, a chin up or a I can't remember if it was a bench press or something like that. It might have been a chin up and then he'd have a graph off that of what your bench press should be, your um your barbell row should be, your external rotator, your tricep push down, he would have this graph of what you should be. And yeah, yeah. he obviously tested him and then retested him and he was stronger. And that's the one thing he always claimed is that it brought massive strength gains just by creating more stability in that joint. Yeah, I remember some. Yeah, I remember that. And he used to. I think he used to talk about the trap three raise. Yeah. And how it had to be at kind of nine percent. And can you imagine? Let's say your bench press oh, is like your, it's like a hundred k. Imagine doing a nine kilo trap three raise. Yeah. That'd be. Yeah. I mean, for, yeah. I mean, that would like just the thought of that is like. Yeah, I could. Yeah, I could do it. Just, I could do yeah. it. It'd be like a kettlebell swing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I, I'll get it up there, but uh, there'll be a lot of hips yeah. in there or something. Very much a lower back exercise or, for me. Yeah, though. or if you're, lying, <laughs> if you're lying on the bench, it's like skiing, and it you just yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. pure yeah. momentum. Yeah, but I mean, Sir Serrano talks about similar things, isn't he? About yeah, um, yeah, absolutely. I'm sure, I'm sure it is. I'm sure he wasn't talking uh, shit, but that that's what he said. So external rotator strength, obviously, he measured it all out internal, external. Um, and then all the other measures off that tricep strength and, uh, strength. and if he always said if you brought that up because to be fair most people's external rotator strength is terrible yeah. internal rotator strength is massively strong because we're doing pull downs all the time and you see people doing that we're doing bench presses which is all internal rotation um and it's that muscle that we use all the time. We grab stuff all the time and hold it. So we're just constantly firing up that internal rotator. Um, 
and the external one is just left out there and you will eh, like baseball players will pull it all the time because they're just winging the ball and has to decelerate an arm at a massive rate and their shoulders blow so it is it's something that gets forgotten you see it in face pulls people are doing this but they can't get there's mm-hmm. no back pull um so it is it's like i believe in that because if you're just stood there and you're your hands are there, then obviously there's a lot of peg tightness, lat tightness, but also you, that external rotation needs to happen from the scapula, shoulder blades, and from that shoulder joint. Yeah, yeah, and that's kind of the reason. I think that's probably where my thought process is first started on get their external rotators, traps, lats working well first, get their shoulders mm-hmm. sitting in a nicer position, and then they'll be more stable and more ready. Uh, more ready to lift um so on that just like we did um last week uh jack if you wouldn't mind th- three or four assisting exercises that would go through someone's um bench press protocol or um so do you mean something to do in a long side in a session or do you in a session yeah that's exactly what i mean yeah no i mean um alongside a session um within a session uh, how would you well, because it's a push normally like the ratio i recommend for like, if you're doing your own programs if you've got a push try and get at least two probably three other pull exercises in whether that's single arm row seated row whatever it is um so pull exercise and probably some sort of yeah like simon said an external rotation of the shoulder exercise just to balance it out so yeah if you've got a push two to three other pull exercises simon uh, similar uh, sort of answer there, yeah I guess. yeah no absolutely I, I i quite like a bench press and a face pull um combination quite a lot because it's up there and it's i'm not trying to fatigue it when it's up there but um in terms of just raw strength and trying to get that stronger um a tricep dip tricep dip i love it because the biggest bench pressers in the world have the biggest triceps in the world. I always remember there was a shot putter that came trained in our gym um, when I was working in the sports center. And he used to throw 180 kilo up like it was just nothing. And he threw that up on a neutral grip. No assisted of anything. And I used to, it just blew my mind. And you do drop sets, you do 180, 160, 140, 120, 100. And I just was like, what the hell and it was just because he was an athlete before because he has previous experience of being you know that real close shot putting experience so that's why his grip was there he's trying to go into powerlifting but he couldn't change his grip it was too good it worked for him but his triceps man were just insane you ever see that one where it's just it's <laughs> I mean, it's just hanging. I used, I used to look at it and be like, oh, the, what the hell is that? Like, <laughs> but, yeah, and just in pure jealousy. But he did do, a, he did do tricep ex, um, exercises then to assess that. So a tricep dip along, like Jack says, definitely at least minimum two pulls in there. Um, so and two to one not, ratio, you mean? Two, two to at one, least a two yeah. to one ratio. Yeah, probably three. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Pro- always three is always better because um, how many people are tight there. But I, do, I don't always feel like it has to always be in that session. Um, it can be throughout the week. So if you're doing a chest focus session, you can do two exercises on chest and another one for, let's say, tricep. And then you can hit two back back sessions in that week and you will bring that, that ratio up. It doesn't have to be like, oh, I'm going to do bench press and three, three rowing movements after that. I think just over as long as, you know, if you do 10 sets of bench press and you do 20 sets of rows of some variation where it's high pull, reverse fly, um, L, uh, close grip rows or barbell rows, then that's fine because the volume is always going to win there. Yeah, so it's over the week you, you might add it yeah. rather than necessarily right in that session. Yeah. Um, cool. Um, on the um, – anything else on those? Or you have, Would you add some triceps? Would you add some triceps pretty much every – in the same sort of context like within the session or around the session um yeah, would that be part yeah, of or yeah you could do it at the end yeah because it'll assist the exercise itself and it's, yeah it couples well nicely together yeah. yeah um with regards to incline dumbbell uh, barbell pressing is that something that you use to help strengthen a, a flat press or is that would you use that for just different reasons to try and build muscle around the chest shoulders whatever 
probably that for me probably that probably the just if i'm going for volume it it, it would be you know if i want to do more exercise for the chest i don't want to just always keep them on the same pattern because you're just grooving away at something that has a high high potential of injury then you know because people are already tight then so if i do like strength training on flat bench and then i do my volume after that for assisted on flat bench again it's just you know, I'm just exhausting the same pattern, whereas just changing that angle and loads everything slightly differently, but almost the same as well. Yeah. 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 For me, it'd be a question of like, yeah, not a question. It'd be a statement of like, you have to create balance, even though it's, yeah, it's still a push exercise, but like your pec is not just one muscle here where you just do one angle of pressing and it works the whole thing. Like if you're flat, you're only working sort of the middle section, whereas you want to create balance across all your muscles. That's the whole point. So to do the incline would just be just good balance of training to have that in your programming. Cool. Um, I, think that's, I think that's good. Is, unless there anything else you, you gents want to cover? Before There's, we so much. There's so much. There is, there is so much. There's always more. We, we'll do it. We'll, like, I think the idea is that we'll, this is kind of from beginning to beginner to just getting people to, to yeah. barbell press so i think what we'll do with all of these like the deadlift and the um and the uh, squat chin up next week we'll talk about um when you've got there and you're pressing quite well what what can you do at that point then um to the chin up the chin up will definitely be one that uh, is interesting because there's so many different takes on how you get there and they get the same result and everybody's got their own like protocol if you like i like doing this or i like getting somebody here and then on on the this but they're all yeah, i just like to hear what the progressions are this is yeah. and, and everybody wants to do a chin up like females meals we all love the channel yeah did you see mine in the week no. yeah i did actually yeah you got the four twelves. <laughs> got three twelves one eight yeah. i was i thought it was a four yeah the last one man like i got I couldn't believe I'd done the third one because my arms were so zapped by the time I got to it. And I, I managed to get the, um, partly because I was being filmed, I think. Um, yeah. And then yeah. I got to that. But you know, when you get to the thing and you're like, my arms were so pumped. Like they were so pumped. My back was so pumped. And I could barely like bring my arms to here to grab the bar. Um, so I knew after I'd done the first couple, I was like, oh. Uh, maybe, I meant, maybe I mentally defeated myself there. But there was just no way. I got, I'm surprised I got to eight. But I've gone from, I think, 12, 8, 6, 6. I can't remember what I said in the first. Yeah, you, something like, like big yeah. drop off. Yeah. yeah, but now it's like 12, 12, 12. And then, then the big drop off after the third 12. Mm. So, but yeah. yeah, but man, that's a great amount of progression. But that's taken nine weeks. Yeah. yeah. And do you know what I mean? And just bear in mind that I can already I could already do chin ups beforehand. It's not that mm. I couldn't. I could already do them quite well. Um it's just that my endurance wasn't there. So for anyone, again, leading back to our point that we've been making mm. over the whole time is um you're not gonna don't progress. Rush. Don't rush your progression. It's it's gonna come if you just if you're just consistent with it. So uh, nothing the main thing, consistency. Yeah. You, yeah. every, like, you can't just do it for six weeks and then sack it off and then come back and be like, Oh, I can't do push. <laughs> I, I do think that like there's nothing slower progressing than a chin up no, it, it, you know gaining one rep is a massive massive achievement like if you get somebody from zero they won you've done yeah. something well there because just doing that alone is huge that's their one rep max you know that so yeah, I know exactly. One that's yeah. that's one hundred percent better. Hundred percent better. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and every time, that's a great stat. Oh uh, yeah, we're we we did none, and now we're five hundred percent better. <laughs> yeah. That's, yeah, I guarantee five hundred percent better results. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So just remember, everyone, if you've gone from not being able to do one chin ups to do one chin up, you're one hundred percent better at chin ups. <laughs> yeah, it's great. Fact. <laughs> Even Fact. if you get a half of one, that's fifty yeah. percent better. Yeah, 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 yeah. Does that does that count? Does that yeah. Count? Well, it, it don't, I, I'd say I'd say it only counts if you can get from lockout the to the yeah yeah because yeah. lockout at the, anything from lockout to there is the hardest. You can go from here to here all day. Yeah. And then we talk about that shoulder stability again oh, from lockout. Yeah. It's shoulder, what we've been talking about. Um, yeah. But we'll cover that next week um, because we'll conclude here. Um, thank you very much, gents. It's always, too, it's always too short.
Always, oh, it flies by. Always too short. I might have a bit more time next week, so hopefully. I just hope that people are as interested in it as we are. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, no one listening, and it's just us. Yeah. We have no idea. <laughs> we got, we got, we got Stu, on, we? Stu's listening. We got my cousin Nora's listening. If Stu's, li- if Stu's listening, then like he's going to be the chin up champion he, of he the is. world. Like I've he's never not, seen. Huh? He's not going out with me. Oh, sh- <laughs> is, is he not? <laughs> is he not? Well, we're not telling anyone. Ah, right. So. Oh, rash, yeah. But like, I mean, Tams is like just yeah, she is. Yeah. Chin up, like. She doesn't even look like she's trying when she's doing it. I know. That's the worst thing. It's like, like she's done twenty now. Is she even. Yeah. I'm gonna put it down to that female thing where they have better endurance than us. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and it's the, Anna, Anna, I was. I promise, Anna. I was on the way to mentioning you, but I got interrupted by Simon talking about Stu. So, um, I promise, I would. I hadn't forgotten you. Thank you. Hi, Anna. <laughs> Say hi to Anna, guys. Anna, oh, hello. Hi, Anna. Um, all right, guys. Thank you very much. And thank Pleasure. you for everyone who watched. Thanks for Helen for the question. Uh, next week, if for everyone who's watching, I'm going to try and get a five minute Q&A from you guys. Um, so if you have anything you think about over the week you want us to talk about, you can either pop it into the questions uh, when I post them out on Instagram. Um, or you can just ask them on here. And what we'll do is rather than in the middle of the podcast, we start answering and go off topic, we'll answer them right at the end. Um, As always, look out for Simon's three core workouts, uh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 12.30, live on Instagram. And my two kettlebell workouts, two banded workouts, and of course this podcast next week, and the shoulder stability workout this Wednesday. We just talked about it, everyone shoulder stability you think you just think i, I timed this i knew this is how professional we're getting i knew this was going to happen that's why you didn't want to talk about chin ups that's why i didn't want to talk about this yeah, is something. what i'm talking about okay so get the shoulders in get get your shoulders get right? your shoulders <laughs> <laughs> all right guys thank you very much simon enjoy the dog yeah jack pleasure. enjoy london yeah. until next time enjoy your bike <laughs> yeah see you see later, you later. Yeah.